Okay, so this is the CarPod Go T3 Pro. It's a wireless Android Auto and CarPlay screen that I'm going to connect with my car. This comes in at around $250. They run offers and discounts from time to time, so make sure you hit the link in the description to get the latest pricing information. Now, I've reviewed quite a few CarPlay products before in the past. The reason that I was really excited to try this one out, not only that this is a new release, but also this has been one of the highest rated in terms of the reviews from other customers that I've seen online for any CarPlay product. It's got about 4.8 star rating on Amazon across all of their customer reviews. And I just really like the design of this. So let's go ahead and show you what's in the box and then we'll head outside into one of my cars to set this up. But essentially, I'm not going to set this up in my Range Rover or my Audi, which already has an integrated screen with wireless CarPlay installed. I'm going to set this up in one of my older cars, just so it has that capability to have a screen and to also have CarPlay as well, which the car doesn't. So that's going to be the most ideal situation of why you'd buy this. So let's get into it. Okay, so there's a lot of accessories that came in my package. Some of these are optional accessories that you can also buy from the CarPod Go website. But this is actually the screen here. This is 1980 by 720p ultra wide resolution. And this also works at 60 frames per second. This is a full HD laminated display. So it's going to be very visible and very clear no matter what the daylight sun conditions are hitting the screen. And it also goes up to 700 nits of brightness, which I think is absolutely great. And this is going to be one of the most premium CarPlay products that I'm going to install. Now you've got the windscreen suction mount, you also have the 9 volt power adapter for your car. You have yourself the user manual and various other brackets and mounts for the primary wind suction mount that you can use. But one thing I also like, this also comes with a rear parking camera as well. So if you want to wire this to your car and have this show up on the screen as a wireless reversing camera, then you have the option to do that. You've got a USB-C to USB-A OTG cable. If your car doesn't have Bluetooth, then you can connect this to the auxiliary port and the USB port of your car to give you Bluetooth connectivity. And one thing in terms of Bluetooth that I like about this screen as well is that this also has something called Bluetooth display only mode. Now what that means is that you don't have to necessarily connect your phone to your car's Bluetooth and then also to the T3 Pro Bluetooth separately. If that happens, then you would have to do double Bluetooth connections with the Bluetooth only mode, this only allows you to connect to the screen and that will automatically connect to your car's Bluetooth, which would only allow you to just use one connection to play back your music, to navigate through Google Maps, for example, and everything like that, which I think is quite convenient. Now, if we take a look at the back of the screen, this is a very strong magnetic mount. So this comes attached with it. If you just see that, it's super strong. It's not going to move once it's locked into place and it's gonna take some force to actually pull off. That is a very convenient factor when you do want to maybe just have this and you're driving either quite fast on the highways or you're actually going through very rough roads, then you don't want the screen to shake or actually fall off at any point. In terms of the ports, you have two USB-C ports. One is for powering the device, and you also have one as a USB source that you want to maybe connect to, to load up content onto here. The first circular port there is the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack. The next one is the AV in to connect the rear camera. So it's very simple. Let's go ahead and take this off. Very nice display. So now I'm gonna go out and set this up in one of my cars, just play around a little bit, find the right positioning, connect all the cables, and then I'll showcase how I set it up. And then we'll go through how it works and just give you an ultimate review of how the CarPlay screen performs. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we are in the car. Now, just to show you how I've mounted this, I've used this onto the windscreen with the windshield mount. Now, one thing I do have to mention is no matter what mounting method you use, you need to make sure that the screen is actually sitting on the dashboard itself. This is due to the weight of the actual screen itself. You don't want it to hang freely. Otherwise, due to the weight of it, you do risk it falling. And especially if you go over any bumpy roads, this could actually fall off. It puts a bit of weight and tension onto the actual mounting bracket and it starts pulling it back a little bit and you don't want that to do that. So to alleviate all of that tension, it needs to be resting on your dashboard. So get it as low as you can and make sure it sits on there. Now I've connected it with a USB-C cable and I've connected that down to the power port here. 
I've got my own 9 volt power port just there as well which has two USB slots one is for my dash cam and one is for the T3 Pro so that's how I've connected it it's a very simple setup I haven't connected the rear parking camera but that is also an option but let's go ahead and turn it on and see how this performs okay so before I go ahead and turn this on there's two things to be aware of the startup time of this from turning on all the way for the car play to open is roughly around 12 seconds which is actually one of the fastest I've seen as a startup time to get into CarPlay in any of these types of products that I've reviewed in the past and in fact in my Range Rover the inbuilt CarPlay system takes longer than that to actually get into the system so I think that's a really great plus point the second thing to be aware of is that once you do have it connected with your phone the first time you can auto connect very quickly so it doesn't just load the CarPod Go system it just goes straight into CarPlay. So we're going to test that out now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car on. So you can see that loaded up as soon as I turn the car on. It goes into the main screen and then you'll see in a second, CarPlay is now connecting and there we go. It has gone straight into it and that was very quick. So that's one thing I really like about it because the last thing you want to do is wait quite a while for this to load the actual CarPlay or Android Auto system. Now this is very responsive, it is 60 frames per second and that's actually really great, especially when you do want to see fast response times when you are navigating this. So of course you have all your favorite CarPlay apps. You can go back to the CarPod Go screen by just clicking on this here. I'm just gonna do that because I wanna show some settings from here. You have a few icons just there along the bottom. First one is CarPlay, then you have Android Auto. You have Bluetooth. When you select this, you can see my phone is connected there by default. And I also have auto connect turned on. So that's very convenient when you want to go straight into it like I've just shown you. If you have multiple phones connected, then you can choose which one you want to select for CarPlay. And that's probably most useful when you want to keep auto connect off. You also have some display options. You can change the levels of the brightness for either day and night modes. So the day one is auto, night is manual. Night shift, this basically gives you the dark theme of the system between those times, 6 p.m. and 7 a.m. I actually haven't found a way to adjust these times, so they are fixed, even though in the summer months it is nighttime around 9 p.m., so it may go dark during the 6 p.m. time. You can also change like the wallpaper, you only have three options there. The logo, I can select this to be Mercedes because I am in quite an old Mercedes car right now. And then CarPlay settings, I've set this to right drive because in the UK, I am a right hand side drive. You can see 60 frames per second is turned on. Now volume, you've got media, navigation and phone. I've set media navigation to maximum because my car here doesn't actually have Bluetooth inbuilt into it. That's how old it is. And there's no USB or auxiliary port for me to actually utilize that auxiliary to USB Bluetooth adapter that came in the box. So what I'm going to showcase is how the speaker sound on this system as well if I'm just going to play back the audio directly from the CarPod Go. Now speaking of that if we go into audio output you can see I've set it to speaker mode so I'm going to utilize the speakers on this because there's no other way for me to actually play back my music from Spotify via CarPlay into my car stereo system because I have no auxiliary port in the car that I can connect this to and I don't have Bluetooth either but if you have a car that does have those things I think the best option is dual Bluetooth, the display only mode. So that links to your car's Bluetooth. So you can just play back everything from your car's stereo speakers. But also if you have a steering wheel with controls for your music, that will also work with the system. So when you hit next, automatically on the CarPod Go system, it will go to the next track. And it makes it feel like that this is an integrated screen that came with your car. So that's a really good option. But likewise, you can use an auxiliary to auxiliary cable and connect it to your speakers as well if you have that port by selecting the aux option just there. If we go into system, this is where you can change the language, date and time. So it's a very simple and basic setup. And then what I'm gonna do now is just to quickly show you a sample playback of some music directly from the internal speakers of this device. So I'll go back into CarPlay and I'll go into Spotify. So let's just play your song. I'll bring the microphone a little bit closer to it.
Now, by no means is this a very powerful speaker system. It is fairly quiet, and I can imagine if you are driving, then especially if you have the windows down, you may not hardly hear anything. But with the windows up, you can still make out the music. It's, it's manageable, I would say, but it's not the most strongest of speakers, but it is a very slim and compact portable device. So just beware that if you are going to use this, ideally try and have the setup where you can play it back through your car stereo system. That will be the ideal situation for this. My specific use case for this would be to actually use this more with Google Maps and for my navigation. But if you are getting any incoming phone calls, for example, this does have an internal microphone. Again, it's probably not going to be as good as an internal mic if you have one in your car's system already, which it can link to then you may have to switch over the microphone to use directly from your phone. And that will be ideal if you have a phone mount maybe in your air vents and just speak through there. And it's up to you like whether you want the output of the audio to be from the internal speakers of this or through your phone, especially if you have an old car like this that I'm in. But again, you have all of those options to play around with. So for me, having now a very nice screen that have the option for music, but more than anything, I now have CarPlay to then have a satellite navigation system in this very old car. For me, that's going to be a lot more convenient because then I don't have to rely on my phone any longer. So having said all of that, this is a great system. I'm very happy with this. It, the design of this just looks great. I just wanna go now for a quick drive and just showcase how it works. Sitting there on the dash as well, just to test out a little bit of the movement, see if there is any, but ultimately just to see what the experience is like with this. Now, as I've driven around with this for a few days now, it has been absolutely great. It just looks nice, very clean, very minimal. And in fact, from the outside of the car, it actually looks like a screen that could potentially be integrated with the car, it, like a pop-out screen kind of situation. But nonetheless, it's very sturdy, it doesn't shake. I've not had any issues with it falling off. The magnet is actually very strong. And like I mentioned, using Google Maps for my navigation is the most beneficial thing that I've used this for, especially in a car that doesn't have a sat nav or even a screen like this integrated. Feels like you've got a nice premium upgrade to a very old car. So I definitely recommend you all have a think about your car that you want to install this type of equipment in. And if you do have a Bluetooth ready car, if you do have an auxiliary port, if you have a USB port, this is going to take that premium upgrade of your car that much further. Make sure you check the link in the description to find out all of the key features of this, what it can do for you and your car, and make sure to check their latest pricing information. They may run some discounts from time to time as well. I'm very happy with this. If you have any questions you'd like to learn more about, about the CarPod Go T3 Pro, then as always, drop a comment down in the description. But hopefully you found this useful. I'm happy with this. My family is very happy with this. And make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all at the next one. Take care.